Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Champions of Inspiration. Today, my guest is a true champion of inspiration. He's a chiropractor, an educator, a lecturer, a workshop presenter, a best-selling author, a keynote speaker. What, what doesn't he do? <laughs> Dr. Ken Harris, thanks for joining us here on Champions of Inspiration. Thanks for having me. I also take out the garbage. I just want to well, add <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah, that's the way it has to be. So uh, you are the author of Synchronicity, a book that we want to talk about today, and then we'll talk about other things as well. But it, you know what I love is the subtitle, The Magic, the Mystery, and the Meaning. What is the magic, the mystery, and the meaning of synchronicity? Well, every time I have one, I ask, I ask those three questions. How could this have happened? And what's the meaning behind this happening? Because I've experienced so many high frequency coinciders or coincidences that I know in my heart of hearts, they were prearranged in many cases, given to me by a higher power, a higher source, a divine, uh, a divine um, acquaintance meeting for me. And I get excited. I, it is magical. I go, what? I can't, I just, I get giddy. And then I always know there's deeper meaning that it was not a random mathematical happenstance accident. Uh, I don't believe in accidents. I believe everyone we meet, we meet for a very specific reason. We don't know it at the moment. When we retrospect, we connect the dots, we figure it out. But everyone is a student and teacher to each other. So pay attention to so-called strangers because in my world, a stranger is a friend. I just haven't met them yet. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Well, I love the, the quote from the book. There are no coincidences. People are, we meet people intentionally who have been put on our path for a reason, sometimes sooner, sometimes later. Well, that's how I met you. I mean, we met, I met you through a mutual friend and the time is impeccable because I had this desire and intention of late that I wanted to go on to some kind of a TV or I've been on radio. I've been on many podcasts, but I've never been on a, like a cable TV station. So you're my first, but I'm, <laughs> I'm shooting for, I'm shooting for NBC, CBS. So I have big aspirations to get the message out. Not for me personally, to make people aware. Number one, you're not walking on this planet by yourself. You're being helped. You're being guided. Pay attention. Well, I love that. Again, as I, as I go through things and I see there's seven types of synchronicities, there's six reasons why this happens to us. There's five questions you ask yourself. I mean, we got to unpack this a little bit. So let's share everybody, uh, share with everybody the types of synchronicities first. Let's, let's walk down the path. All right. So, you know, and no one has to take notes because I, I created a little pamphlet. It's called, it's called a user's guide to categorizing and understanding synchronicity. The seven, six, five, four formula for having more synchronicity in your life. Now you can get this for free if you go on my website. You just give me your, your, your first name and your email address. This is our gift to you. And it will delineate very clearly the seven types, the six reasons we meet, the five questions you need to be asking yourself and four practices to have more synchronicity in your life. Number one, I love this one, precursor synchronicities. That often happens when you have a dream state. And in the dream, you meet certain people, or you have a certain experience, and lo and behold, within a day, a week, or a month later, it shows up in your 3D world, in, in the world of time and space. But you've already experienced it in the dream world. And, and those are those I just start laughing. I don't tell the people always that, you know, I already met you, but we're going to have, I pretend that right. this is my first time. Another type of synchronicity. Well, I, I, think, I think that that's amazing that that we have that opportunity to do that. I've, I've had, now that you describe it that way, I've had that happen as well. It's just like, in for people to understand that, would that be almost our own interpretation of deja vu? Gosh, it's like, I've already met you before. Yeah, well, that is a phenomenon. Deja vu is a real phenomenon. And, and sometimes you'll have a, what they call a visceral deja vu, not just a mental one, but your body will go, what? I've had them and you'd be almost when they happen at that level, you almost can't speak because it's, it's, it's almost like disbelief. You can't believe that you've already met this person and had this very conversation with that person. It's happened to me multiple times, but I want to make sure that you said that we could go to the website. What is the website? 
Okay, my website is D O C T O R, the full word doctor, Ken, K E N, Harris.com. Uh, they, so, there's, there's so many Dr. Ken Harris's. I had to take the full word, the full name. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, well, I remember I was there earlier. I just wanted everybody to, to go. So I didn't mean to interrupt you. Let's, let's keep on going down the path. Okay. So, so sometimes you'll meet someone uh, when you deviate from your normal routine, we, we all have habits, right? Some of them not so good, but we all tend to do a lot of the things repeatedly. And sometimes if you just deviate do it a little differently, go home a different way, eat in a different restaurant, order a different food, blah, blah, blah. You'll have another opportunity where the universe will bring you a, a particular person or an event to awaken you to something that you were totally unconscious to. So you need to deviate your, well, in, in neuroscience, we call it neuroplasticity. You want to you you create new circuits in your brain. So deviate, do things differently because the brain wires and fires together and they get locked in. And so there's a part of a brain that's always looking to reform itself. And by deviating from your routine, you can increase the likelihood of having more synchronicities. Well, I think it's, it's interesting when you say that because back uh, when I had uh, my, my cerebellar stroke, I was on no medications. All of a sudden they put me on seven medications, which I was kicking and screaming about, but 90 days into it, something that I had done for 30 years, get off at the exact same exit to go to my exact same house. I missed three days in a row. <laughs> and I said, there's something that is not right. I do not want this, these synapses and, and this neuroplasticity to, to take it in that direction. Right. And so uh, it was actually the cause for me going back to the doctor and saying, I want off this stuff. It's jacking with my brain. Uh, that's not the, that's not the kind of, uh, experience I wanted to have going forward. So again, again, right with you on the, on the reasons behind it all. Yeah. Sometimes we'll have what they call an expansion synchronicity. You're looking to change your career and, and you want to expand your, uh, your, your creative work in the world. You'll meet someone who will have the exact opportunity for you. And, and it's uncanny when it happens and it will offer you a job you've been thinking about. So you'll have an expansion of your service in the world. Other times you'll have what we call uh, message synchronicities. You'll see a number or an animal keeps passing your place. So every time you look at the, at the phone, it's 1111 or whatever. Everybody has their special number. It's a sign from the spirit world, from the other side of the veil, to communicate with you, to pay attention. Uh, I, I'm, I love when I meet animals. Uh, I walk every day in nature. That's one thing I, I find uh, health promoting, either by a, an ocean, a lake, or a forest. And I, I meet critters from time to time. And I look up the meaning of the critters. And there is always a message there. It's not by accident. I'll meet a bunny one day, or a bear the next, or, or a, a crocodile the following day. Here in Florida, we meet crocodiles, which, by the way, are very ancient symbols. So look up the symbology of it. And pay attention to license plate numbers or billboards, because those are message synchronicities. The, the universe, uh, the invisible world is communicating with you. Uh, sometimes you can create a synchronicity through, through neuroscience, through manifestation. You hold a very strong intention. You, you want to achieve something or do something. And, and when you have that intention and you, through meditation practice, you're going to start to fire certain circuitry in the brain. You're going to have electrical impulses that are going to start to generate. Then if you can get to the headspace of having the feeling that you've already accomplished that, it's already happened, it's a done deal, that creates a magnetic field in the human body. Now you got a great setup. you got an electrical field in the brain, a magnetic flow in the, in the body. You have an electromagnetic arc, and that will go out into the field of pure potentiality or infinite possibilities, as my friend, Dr. Chopra would say. And it will literally draw unto you all the people, places, and circumstances. And that seems magical, but it's really, it's, it's really can be calibrated and measured through neuroscience. Well, isn't that also the reason, and, and I know Zig Ziglar, people used to kind of laugh at him. He said, are you positive all the time? And he said, well, I, I just, not everything always works out, but I know it always works out better than if I'm negative, right? So, I mean, this is where a big piece of self-talk becomes very important, right? Because, because in creating our own synchronicities, in, in focusing on our desires, 
it doesn't differ, delineate between positive desires and negative desires, correct? It's really right. important. People think, oh, it's, you know, it's Pollyanna. No, this is, this is called physics. This is way important, right? I would say metaphysics, yes. I, metaphysics. I would say pay attention to your thought. Pay attention to the conversation you're having with the universe because the subconscious is, is, it does not make judgments. It'll, it'll bring to you whatever you're thinking long enough and perseverating. But here's what I would also say. Unconsciously, sometimes we draw things to us to awaken us to a, a deeper level of compassion. The so-called bad things that happen to all of us at some point in our lives always have a silver lining. There's always a blessing, even as horrible as it may seem at the time. I've had patients tell me, you know, doc, the best thing ever happened to me was I got cancer. I woke up. I was miserable. I was making all this money, but I had no purpose, no passion, no reason for living. Now I'm alive. So we're not to judge the outworking in the moment because as you uh, move on in time, the dots will start to fall in place and you'll have a whole different perspective on what happened to you and why. I would say things happen uh, for us, not so much to us. Totally agree. I, I actually created uh, one of my memes is perspective grows as time passes and knowledge is gained. Beautiful. That encapsulates what I just said in a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to put it into the cliff notes version. Here. Keep uh, on well, going. Lo loving I'm going to move on to some of the reasons we meet people in our life path. Yeah, please. So, yeah, I, I have some friends where like the, uh, the earth and the moon we orbit each other for the last 45, 50 years. These people stay in your life forever. They're your soul friends. They're people you may have had an agreement with prior to even coming into this world to meet at a certain time and place and travel the path, uh, parallel path together. There are other people that come every 88 years. They're like Haley's Comet. <laughs> I've seen them a long time, but they do come back. I've had a lot of people come back, circle back in my life, sometimes for the healing. There was, a, there was a little bump in the road, and now I had another opportunity before they left or I'm leaving to heal that experience. Uh, Many times you'll meet people in your life path to encourage you. I'm a great encourager of, of people. I see the best in people and I, I'm a great cheerleader. You wanna get, you wanna hire me as a cheerleader? Anytime I'm ready, willing and able to see you succeed because as, awesome. you, as you succeed, I succeed. That's my attitude. There's no competition. We're here to complete each other, not to compete. We're here to collaborate with each other and create something entirely new that neither one of us could have done in the first place. So, so those are expansion, uh, encouraging reason, reasons we meet people. Sometimes we meet people just to hold space for us, just to, just to love us unconditionally and, and pray for us so that we, we get through without too many bumps in the road. But I don't know anybody who doesn't have bumps in the road, by the way. You know, it's not, it's not a smooth ride. Life, life is a series of ups and downs. I always tell like, my, uh, my kids, life is bitter and life is sweet. It's both. No one has a silver spoon. No one gets through untouched. No one's immune from, here's a big word, the vicissitudes of life, the ups and the downs. Sometimes we meet people, they, they, are, they wake us up. M my teacher, when I met him, I, I was sleepwalking. But when I met that, my teacher, I woke up. I had, I had like my third eye, or you want to call it my pineal, just blew open. And I remembered who I was, why I was here. And he awoken me. And I studied with him for 10 years. I, I, I paid enough attention. So he was my awaker upper. And I've done that for other people, as I'm sure you have too, Scott, in this program. Sometimes people listening to this program are going to have an awakening just by listening to something they never, they never, they had a limiting belief around. They, they said, wow, I never thought of it that way. So that's one of the things that I encourage consistently is to suspend disbelief for a period of time for this, for this 30 minutes, as we're talking to this champion of inspiration, uh, is it possible is it plausible? Is, you know, can you open up and, and find, I, I share the equation many times, growth equals awareness plus inspired action. For us to truly grow in our being, we first have to have awareness that there's something to potentially grow to, you know, there's a different way, but then we still have to take that inspired action toward it to actually affect that growth to to take place, which is why I love shows like this. Um, you don't have to believe everything that that we're saying here today. Just suspend disbelief for a period of time and consider it. That's all the, the request is, right? 
I would say don't believe anything you hear. Believe what you experience directly. You know, I'm postulating that. things that go down. You know, you don't want to know what chocolate like if chocolate tastes like. Taste one, and don't believe what I'm going to tell you it tastes like. So, so have the direct experience. Then there's really no need for belief. Once you've had the direct experience, no one can talk you in or out of that that experience. Now, most of what we think and believe is the mother, father, teacher, preacher culture that we got dumped in between zero and seven when we were wide open. And, and, you know, you come to find out as you grow up, a lot of what they said wasn't true. I would say the vast majority wasn't true. Right. It was passed down generation to generation to generation. You know, the limiting beliefs and, and uh, I, I would say the confines that people live in, the, the headspace. You know, people ask me, uh, where are you from? Uh, you know, I, and I meet a lot of people. And I say, well, I'm from the same place you're from. And they look at me like with this puzzled me. Look, I, then I go, I'm from New Jersey because they don't get it that we all come from the same place. And they ask me, hey, what are you doing here? I said, just visiting, aren't we all? Either they get that or they don't get that. So, yeah. you know, it's funny, you can read people real quick and you can see if they're receiving or they're... The problem with most people is they have what we call cognitive dissonance. You start to tell them another perspective and they say, yeah, but I believe this. And now what you're telling me is the opposite of this, which means I'm gonna have to let go of this. And that makes them anxious. People don't want to give up their belief systems rather than, rather than have the direct experience. I love that uh, cartoon of the six in the sand. One guy's on one side, one guy's on the other. They're looking down at the sand. And one says, that's a nine. And the guy says, no, that's a six. <laughs> you know, and they argue back and forth. What's your perspective? But more importantly, yeah. what's your experience? Well, it's, it, it's a great, uh, that's a great point. I mean, the, these are nuggets that you're, that you're firing out here uh, today because these are really important. It, it does become what is your perspective and what is your bent? You know, are you culturally this way or that way? It's it's one of the things, quite frankly, in our society today. I mean, my platform is to do what I can do to return respect, honor, and dignity to the planet. I, but what that means is my respect for you means you have the my ultimate respect for you to believe whatever you believe. And I should respect that. I don't have to agree with it. I don't have to believe it, but I should respect it. I should honor you for it, that you have it to lift you up. And then dignity is how we both feel after that's been accomplished. And so, uh, again, I mean, that's why I love sometimes people will say, why did you have that person on the show? Or, or why did you talk about that? Because you need to know about it. Then you can make a critical decision, right? I love the analogy of the elephant in the room and there's 10 people sitting around in a circle and tell me what you see, Scott. And you'll say, I see a long trunk. And someone else says, I see a big ear. And another person says, no, I see a tail. It's all true. We're all seeing a little fractal of consciousness. No one sees the whole picture. That's why God, the universe created more than one of us. Uh, we're, we're I, I think, again, great nugget there. Great perspective. Love that. Yeah. And suspend okay. beliefs. Uh, you know, I, I used to be a lone wolf guy. And I used to be pretty dogmatic and back in the day. And I didn't join anyone or anything because my shadow is my shadow. <laughs> I, was, I was smaller than everybody else. What could they teach me? What an arrogant, what an egocentric arrogancy I carried. But I believe me, life tempered me. I've been brought to my knees more than once and, and realized that I, I'm still learning. We're on a spiral here. You know, as long as we're in these flesh bodies, we're going to be open to learning and we should be respectful of other people's perspectives. You know, it's so sad that the religions of the world were killing each other over religion. It's one God, one source, one creator. You know, we're fighting over the names. In my book, I'm very careful because I said to people, fill that word God in with ever gives you comfort and has been your direct experience for you. But let's not have a war over it. Let's acknowledge there's something higher than you and me which I, I innately already know because I've had so many experiences directly with that something. Well, it, that's one of the things I think uh, as we become more mature, uh, that's code word for older, uh, as we become more mature, one of the benefits of that is number of experiences, right? We've all had, had more experiences that we've come through, good, bad, ugly, whatever they might be. And, but I agree with you. They, uh, it's one of the, the things that I teach consistently is you can turn anything into a learning event by asking five questions. 
what's the lesson? What's the gift? What did I do to create it? How I, what, would I modify it next time to make it better? How's this going to serve me the rest of my life? I should well, use those. Perfect. Those are perfect. I like those questions. I'm going well, to record this and write those down. Those are well, excellent questions. <laughs> Well, thank you. But what what I found and in, in and I found it in application and it's actually actually in my book. That sucks. What now? Real world <laughs> solutions for getting through what you're going through. Which a copy is on its way to you. Uh, the um, is that that we're all going to have these experiences. They're going to be good, bad, or ugly. A big part of what term goes to them is our frame of reference and our experiences prior. Absolutely. Now, I'll, I'm going to make an admission here right on public TV or cable TV. As a chiropractor, I was never enamored with the medical profession, not the doctors and nurses. They're great people. But the whole concept of pharmacology, of trying to manipulate the biochemistry by speeding up or slowing down, hypo and the hypo and hyper and the hypo. And, and so I didn't have a lot of respect for the drug approach per, per se. But when I got sick, I, mean, I had my heart attack two years ago, which humbled me, by the way. I thought I was awake, but I, the universe said, well, we're going to give him a little heart attack, make him more compassionate. I was so thankful for the skill of modern medicine. I have a total different appreciation now for the intervention that medicine can provide in emergency care primarily. I would always tell my patients, listen, uh, if the emergency's there, go and get help and try to get away as soon as you can after the emergency's over, because in an attempt to try to help you, sometimes they may kill you. You know, I mean, that's the truth. I mean, medicine is a minefield. One man's meat is another man's poison. Two people present with the same disease. One takes the drug, they get better. One takes the drug and dies. And you don't know beforehand who's going to do what. So, you know, I, I, I was humbled to think that... Uh, these strangers, these three, five firemen and a whole team of doctors saved my life. They didn't ask me my religion. They didn't ask me my politics. They didn't ask me where I was from. They just did what they were trained to do and thank yep. God for them because at that point, holistic medicine wasn't gonna do me any good. I was too far over the, over the, over the fence. I was on my way down. So that was a very uh, learning experience. I will never talk anybody in or out of doing anything medically anymore. I used to discourage people, honestly. I said, well, why don't you give a little more time, try the natural approach, you know, change your diet, start exercising, take your spinal adjustments as a chiropractor, blah, blah, blah. But uh, now I wouldn't stop anyone from doing anything. I, I wouldn't, I'd say, if you feel that's what you need to do, I'd say, then go do it. I would self-refer them. I would ask them, what do you, because everybody has a different path to walk. Yeah, absolutely. No, no doubt. I mean, I, I love this. Keep on going with the reasons and the questions and this. Let's keep on the synchronicity okay, so, track. So the questions, the number one question you should ask, could what have just happened be a precursor to something that's coming my way soon? Foreboding or for, you know, it's coming down the pipe. Yep. Did I just do something that was out of the ordinary that created this or that was improbable? Did I manifest this uh, synchronicity by dwelling on it, by constantly thinking of it, which I talked about earlier? Love that. Yeah, and number four, is this a sign or a symbol from spirit telling me what I should be doing next or what I should not be doing next? Pay attention. You're at a crossroads. Go left, go right. And if, ladies and gentlemen, if you're at that crossroads and you don't know which way to go, here's what I say. Don't think it. Feel it. Think of, think of the choices. Yes, initially think of it. And then ask your body, how does that feel when I think about that? And my, is my energy field expanding? Am I getting lighter and happy? Or I'm starting to feel fearful and contracted. That's a yes or a no. Much more so than what your head can tell you. Because your head can talk you, your mind, in or out of anything. But your body will never lie to you. The, the physical body will tell you the truth. So find out where in your body you start to feel an expansion or a contraction. Many people, it's the throat. Many, a lot of people, it's the heart chakra, and a lot of people, it's the uh, the uh, solar plexus or the intestines. So the reason they talk about a gut feel is because you actually have a gut feel. You've been, we've all been built with that capability. Right, and it's no accident that the intestines looks like what structure? The human brain. It's all those convolutions. You look at the human brain and you look at the intestines, it's very similar. And so there's a whole there's a whole microbiome down there, a computer that's sending more information to the brain than the brain sending to it. 
there's trillions of microorganisms that live inside of us. And, and so get in touch with your body from making a decision. And last, is this a, you, the question you can say is, is this a serendipitous opportunity for me or has the universe placed this person or created this event as a guidepost to put me on a very certain or distinct path? So you gotta ask those questions and no one can interpret your synchronicities but you. You can ask me, you can, you know, I took out the domain Dr. Synchronicity. I know people are gonna start calling me up and telling me to <laughs> interpret their synchronicities. And I'll just keep on asking them questions. I'll use the Socratic method because in the end, only you, uh, nothing has really extrin extrinsic meaning other than the meaning you give it. I mean, that's my belief. There's no objective meaning to anything other than how you see it through your perspective and lens of consciousness. Well, I think that that's very, uh, that's a, uh, again, that's a golden nugget right there. The, the reality is we all have our frame of references. And, you know, you can go back to Henry Ford, think you can, think you can't, you're right either way. I love that. I you, use know, that. you know, you can go Abraham Lincoln, uh, your, you know, your ability to have absolute resolution determines your path, right? I mean, there, there's so many um different ways that it has been said but the reality is that as we experience more um i was a chiropractic antichrist for 40 years until i actually went to one i listened to what everybody said uh, but i never had experienced it and then i went to an amazing chiropractor here in dallas dr carl foster Parker graduate, just a, a great doc. And he said, I don't know where you've developed these beliefs, but he said, we're going to work with you the way your body's going to allow me to work with you. And I'll explain every bit of it along the way. And because of his care and because of the way he went at it, I went from just being the, the anti-chiropractic guy to the biggest chiropractic advocate as a patient I could be. The you doubting know, Thomas, you were the doubting Thomas until you had a direct experience. Yes. Isn't it amazing? I mean, there's actually an example of somebody who had that Thomas, right? Uh, and, and there's a whole lot of documentation on that. I mean, this is amazing. We could go on. We're going to have to do another show because we obviously haven't gotten through just a, a tidbit of this. So synchronicity is basically God, the universe, higher source infinite power, infinite source, whatever you want to say, connecting the right people at the right time for the right reasons. Is that a, a perfect overgeneralization? It's an internal spiritual gyroscope. It gets us on back on track because we tend to have eddy currents. We all come in with a memory. We, then we forgot why we came here. And then everything in our life path is an attempt to reawaken us to our commission or mission or purpose here. And synchronicity is when you're on an early current, you're going to meet someone, they're going to get you right back on track. Then you're going to go over here in another situation and get you back on track. So pay attention. The number one thing you have to do to have more synchronicity in your life, very simple. Talk to the strangers. Because they're not strangers. They're, they're being sent in many cases specifically for you. And, and to start writing them down. Start keeping a journal. You know, like anything else, when you're more conscious of it, you'll be more apt to look for it. Uh, I used to have patients come in and say, you know, since I started coming to see you, doc, for chiropractic care, I see there's 10 other chiropractors in, in, in this town. I never knew there was any, but you, yeah. I went. you know, that's the way, that's the way consciousness works. My wife fell and broke her shoulder uh, in September. She, she's now seen 30 people on the beach with broken shoulders, wherever we go. She went into, I said, they were probably there all along. You just never paid attention. Mm. So, so talk to strangers, write things down. Uh, and, and, uh, Look for meaning, look, look, start to be a little uh, introspective and start to connect the dots because the dots are there. They're not all that hidden really. But most of us, you know, we're on autopilot, we're automatons. You know, we get up and do the same thing every day in the same way and the same thoughts. And then we want to know why our life's not interesting. Why, so why we're real, if we would learn about and pay atten attention to our reticular activation system, you know, that you know, we can, I actually worked back in the day way, seems like a hundred years ago now, but um, I would work with this store manager in this uh, appliance furniture short, uh, store. And he said, we're going to find every missing button on every couch in the store. 
And I said, how are we going to do that? He said, first, we're going to focus that we're going to find everyone. And then we're going to walk the floor and we'll find it. And we walked the floor and he goes, there's one missing there. There's one's missing there. There's I'm like, how are you doing that? Well, the re- when we tell our brain to find something, to, to find a person, to find a thing, to, to find a, an opportunity, our brain will find the opportunity for us. We're built that way. It's the synchronicities of life, right? Yeah, well, it's a laser focus, laser focus. Absolutely. It's really awesome. Uh, hard to believe we're, we're already through our time. Um, leave everybody with one last piece of wisdom, if you would. Well, I would say at the end of your life, you'll come to finally realize it was never random. And you can relax. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about creating your life. Your life has already been created before you ever came here. So just be happy, be thankful, and, uh, and, and be at peace. You know, we're all going to get to the same place sooner or later. So let's stop fighting with each other. I love that. Awesome. Uh, everybody, please go to drkenharris.com. That's D O C T O R K E N H A R R I S.com and uh, get your uh, study guide there. And, <laughs> and Ken, thank you so much for being here. Uh, look forward to us doing this again very soon. Thank you, Scott, for having me. I'm honored to be on your program. And you're my first uh, intro into cable TV, soon to be national TV. Awesome. Thank you all for joining us here on Champions of Inspiration. We'll see you again at the next event. God bless. See you soon.